Morning Value participants, thank you for joining today's session on business recovery, how to transition your supply chain strategies in light of the current pandemic that's occurring. My name is Matthew Shield and I'll be your moderator for today's session. Joining me today is Matt Daniels and also Brent Carter. Matt is our Managing Director of Sales, FedEx Express Australasia. He has over 20 years of experience in the international transport and logistics industry. In 2016, he was appointed the Vice President of Sales, Southeast Asia. He has experience in the US, Middle East and also Asia. He moved back to Australia in 2019 and is currently the Managing Director of Sales, Australasia. In his spare time, he's a passionate South Sydney Rabbitohs supporter. Joining Matt today is Brent Carter. Brent Carter is our Senior Sales Manager, New Zealand and Fiji at FedEx Express. He's over 15 years of experience in the international transport and logistics industry. And he also comes with some great cross-sector experience in telecommunications, financial services, and also events. In 2005, he was appointed the General Manager of Sales, Marketing, and Customer Care in New Zealand and Fiji. He's also spent time as the Executive Committee Member of Export New Zealand. In his spare time, he's an avid New Zealand Warriors supporter. For today's discussion, what you're seeing on the screen is the key areas we'll focus on. So the first part of today's discussion will focus on the COVID-19 pandemic, how this is impacting the global economy, the New Zealand economy, and also trade partner Australia. We'll then turn our attention to changing consumer behaviour. We'll then look at the supply chain disruption that's been caused by this current pandemic with a civic focus on air cargo. We'll then provide some guidance and best practice tips on how to transition your supply chain in response to these circumstances. So how best to adapt. Then we'll look at leveraging digital technology and automation in light of this current environment. We'll then go through some question and answers. So if you do have any questions during this session, please put them in the chat function. And um, our panelists today, Matt and also Brent, will endeavor to answer those in the question and answers section. So I'll now provide, I'll now hand over to Matt, who will go through the first section of the presentation. Over to you, Matt. Thanks, Matthew. And on behalf of FedEx TNT New Zealand, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to participate in this, in this webinar. It's been uh, specifically designed to share practical insights and solutions with you. And we hope uh, these can be you know, applied to your business and support your business and customers. So we're all aware now that uh, COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the way businesses operate and even the way we live our lives. So changes seen in consumer behavior and demand as well as the various government policies have also affected the landscape of the global supply chain. So as such, we need to build a flexible business model to survive. And today we'll be sharing with you some key insights, which we hope will be beneficial for your business transition. So firstly, let me remind you of some key COVID-19 stats. So uh, let's go to slide five. So as of the 1st of September, the World Health Organization reported that approximately 25 million people around the world have coronavirus. So I started preparing these slides a few weeks ago and the number was around 20 million. Um, closer to home in New Zealand, as of the 1st of September, the New Zealand government Ministry of Health advised that there were 129 active cases in New Zealand. Uh, we've also seen various measures to curb the virus outbreak, social distancing, lockdowns, travel and business restrictions. And these uh, have been effective for New Zealand, who've been at the forefront really of it globally uh, in rapidly tackling uh, the, this issue. So then in the next slide, slide six, uh, we look at the impact of this pandemic on the global economy. And according to the World Bank this year, the global economy is expected to shrink by 5.2%. This is far worse than the dip during the recession in 2009. In fact, the world economy is said to suffer the worst performance in 2020 since the Second World War. The World Bank also advised that advanced economies are projecting to shrink by 7%. We just saw recently that the US was around 10% and UK actually is around 20%. Uh, so if you look at in comparison, Australia and New Zealand, around 7-8% uh, are doing pretty well. 
uh, up there with uh, other major economies like Hong Kong, which is also doing quite well also. Emerging markets and developing economies uh, are forecasted to contract by 2.5%. So this is despite the various countries' commitment, uh, as, you can, as, you know, as you know, New Zealand and Australia have injected some serious stimulus packages and financial aid to support businesses. In slide seven, we look at the COVID-19 impact on New Zealand. So um, as I mentioned before, uh, it's, it's reported on the 18th of June that gross domestic product fell 1.6% in the March 20 quarter. That's the largest drop in 29 years. Uh, and in the New Zealand Herald on the 20th of August, Infometrics expects that economic activity will be down 12.6% per annum in the June quarter. The New Zealand dollar though, has climbed up against the US dollar. However, has been in decline against the Aussie dollar. So this places pressure on New Zealand made goods exported to global markets, offset by being more attractive to one of the main trade lands, which is Australian customers. In June 2020 quarter, the seasonally adjusted unemployment rate fell to 4%, down from 4.2%. Note that these numbers were reported before the recent restrictions uh, a few weeks ago. In slide eight, we look at COVID-19 impact on key trading partner Australia. So as you can see there, Reuters 2020 reports that the Australian economy has fallen into recession. So officially now in recession, uh, the treasurer here yesterday released that we had are now uh, officially in recession with two quarters that have gone backwards. This is the worst uh, uh, issue we've had since the Great Depression. And of course, on top of this, we've also had um, bushfires and drought. Uh, the Australian dollar has climbed uh, against the US dollar and is now up around uh, over 73 cents. Um, this also places pressure on Australian main goods and exported to global markets as well with, with the higher Aussie dollar. The unemployment rate in July 2020 uh, increased to 7.5%. This is the highest we've seen since October 2001. And on the 20th of August, uh, it was released that uh, Qantas was letting go of over 6,000 employees and the pandemic had punched a $4, million, a $4 billion hole, I should say, in its profits. So on slide nine, uh, this illustrates the impact of the pandemic on air cargo capacity. So probably no surprise to you that you've been hearing the shortage of air cargo space everywhere. So based on the study by Seabury, the global air cargo capacity has declined 25% versus the same period last year. Intra-Asia is actually 27% lower than last year and Asia westbound is 26% lower. Air cargo capacity has decreased by 6.5 million tonnes between April and mid-July and Auckland International Airport reported on the 5th of August 2020 New Zealand trends are in line with what's happening in the air cargo market around the world. There are some regional variations, but on average, global air freight volumes are down around 16% and capacity is even lower at minus 23%. So in light of this, FedEx continues to play a critical role in connecting Australia and New Zealand to the world. And in a recent report entitled Statistical Report Aviation, released in June 2020, the Australian government reported actually that FedEx Express Corporation had the highest share of freight carried for Australia with 12.2%. And this is verse uh, June 20, which was at uh, uh, June, June 20, uh, sorry, that's June 20, uh, June 19 was 4.7%. So 12.2% this year, 4.7% last year, uh, quite a big variation. I, I guess uh, this highlights our ability to mobilise quickly to move freight globally and support our customers during these unprecedented times. And with seven over 700 aircraft, the FedEx fleet is the largest uh, air cargo fleet in the world. Uh, the graph on the next slide developed by Accenture on slide 10 illustrates how quickly belly space from passenger flights have disappeared. So if you look at the purple line, it's reduced by almost 73%. And yes, many freighters, as I've mentioned, have been added since February. It still has not been enough to fill the gap. 
And you can see this from the light blue line. According to Auckland Airport 2020, typically 80% of New Zealand air cargo arrives and departs in the belly hold of passenger aircraft. But border closures and highly disrupted aviation market have had a real impact on, on the supply chain. And as you know, restrictions in passenger movements into New Zealand, uh, as, as we've had the same thing, Sydney Airport, for example, is operating at 1%. It uh, wouldn't surprise me if uh, Auckland Airport was around the same. When you don't have the passengers flying in, you don't have the commercial aircraft, obviously. So uh, without those, you don't have the ability to, um, to co-load or to piggyback uh, freight onto the passenger aircraft. And you can see their express freighter capacity, which is the line in grey, has been increasing slowly and steady. In the next slide, slide 11, we look at consumer behaviour. And according to the Capgemini Research Institute 2020, prior to COVID-19, 59% of consumers worldwide had high interaction with physical stores. Now only 24% expect to return to that level of interaction after COVID. In the next six to nine months, only 39% of consumers are expected to return. And in contrast, 37% of consumers now have high interaction with online channels. And this is versus 30% before. So it's no surprise consumers are moving to online. So after understanding what's going on with the world in New Zealand, we have to rethink and reconfigure our business model. And with our customers at the center of our business processes, we need to consider evolving our supply chains to be resilient and agile. In the next three slides, we'll share with you our general view of what you should consider for transitioning your supply chain. At slide 13, uh, with almost everything going online and everything being urgent, the first disruption in supply chain is space and price. You now have to compete with all sorts of products that you could have never imagined in the past. For example, personal protective equipment, face masks, ventilators, all of these are now uh, flooding the market. And whilst designing your new supply chain, you will need to consider disruption that's caused by new local policies and regulations, changes to flight schedules and cancellations. And as you can see, people wanting to get home and it's, it's all over the media here in Australia, uh, there are around 18,000 Australians actively seeking to come back to Australia and are stuck in, in places that you'd think would be easy, like the UK, uh, other parts of Europe, US, where flights are just continually being cancelled with restricted passenger numbers being allowed. This has a, this has a, um, a significant impact on a supply chain, particularly around supply chain stability. And as consumer buying behaviour is changing, you may look to alternative solutions such as online selling channels. Now keep in mind the following, do you have an online store available for your domestic and international customers? Uh, is it set up to manage cross-border inquiries and sales? And I say that because not everyone who looks at your, your website is from New Zealand or from Australia, um, typically over one third are actually looking at it from somewhere else in the world. And do you have a way for customers to leave feedback? And a lot of customers, again, more than a quarter, look at reviews prior to making a purchase. If you don't have a review on there, you're missing out on a, on a, on a particular part of that, um, of that market segment. And with retail stores weakening and more end users buying directly, you need to be able to process more orders at much smaller quantities, more often and often at the end of the day when most people order. And finally, are your shipments visible to your customers? Does your transportation partner have an effective way to provide track and trace? Otherwise, customers will call you. And a good example of this is we see um, B2C customers calling our call center much more often than we'd have a B2B customer. Uh, I'd just like to touch briefly on B2B. So whilst uh, B2B is a paradox, we should spend some time to discuss and it's still the largest part of the transportation supply chain. So um, whilst business to consumer is gaining more momentum, we're, we're still seeing business to business growing. 
And gone are the days when your customers will hold large inventories of stock and wait for their customers to buy. With so many uncertainties, businesses will try to reduce their inventories and are now looking for suppliers and partners that can respond quickly for their orders, as well as provide full visibility of these. On the other hand, whilst your customers are cutting buffer stocks, you need to consider if you, if you should build up your suppliers. If you rely on suppliers that are now struggling with their own supply chain, you should either find alternative sourcing, which sometimes is not easy, or you may have to build stocks to reduce the impact of material shortage. So the normal supply chain model always calls for carrying lower stocks, as stocks involves capital, capital expenditure. But again, you may need to balance that capital savings versus the potential loss of sales if you don't have um, that inventory in stock. Uh, so we're still seeing this with more sending shipments direct to end destination. And a good example is the Trans-Tasman flight that we put on earlier this year, going from Auckland, Sydney, Auckland every day, five days a week. Uh, this, this flight, uh, often many customers shipping from Sydney to New Zealand are shipping direct to end destination and bypassing distribution centers. Uh, we're also seeing with COVID that we're stepping into a low touch economy. So contrary to the previous practice where companies were investing in more human interface to enhance the customer experience, consumers now prefer low touch transactions. So the last mile delivery personnel may only be the face may only be the, 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 you know, the people that they see. It could only be that our drivers and couriers could only be the face-to-face -face people that touch, that touch, touch your customers. So choose your last mile partners carefully. And the low touch economy will impact your after sales value chain as well. So with less motivation uh, to step into a service center, customers or rather you will now need a different form of repair and return. So we now must be ready to do direct retrieval from end users for any repair and return once done. And again, visibility of these shipments is critical to provide seamless and after sales service and enhance your customer experience. So I'll now hand over to a happy uh, Brent for the Warriors winning four of the last five games who will go through seamless logistics solutions for business recovery. Over to you, Brent. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And uh, good morning, everyone. I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. And we hope that you, know, that you find the information in this session valuable to you. Um, yeah, Matt's gone through some really interesting stats, um, uh, you know, especially when you look at sort of the, the impact on, on air cargo capacity. And when we look at those statistics and, and when we take our own experiences into account, we know that the business environment today has, has changed. It's very dynamic. Uh, and we expect this new normal to continue, certainly for the foreseeable future. Yeah, given the, the impact of that reduced cargo capacity on the supply chain, yeah, it makes it even more important that you have a, you know, that you partner with, a, with an end-to-end, -end, a seamless end-to-end -end logistics um, provider, you know, one that can support you and guide you through this next phase of, of the business recovery. You know, while all businesses in New Zealand and indeed around the world are you know, facing these you know, unpredictable challenges, you know, that in itself creates new opportunities. Every day we see a lot more businesses pivoting toward online platforms as Matt's discussed. You know, just look at the, at the huge surge in um, click and collect and home delivery services from businesses that traditionally haven't uh, offered those, uh, those solutions. We also see those businesses seeking new supply chain solutions and, and logistics solutions to adjust and to ride this, uh, you know, this current wave. You know, and, and when we talk about logistics solutions, it's our hope and, and in fact, more to the point, it's our expectation that whenever you send something, we want the shipping experience to be efficient. You know, it's got to be streamlined. It's got to be flexible. Uh, it allows you a, a greater level of, of uh, visibility and control. I'm sure uh, we've all had our fair share of experiences where, you know, when it comes to shipping packages, you know, and, and those experiences really do stay with us. We remember the times where we couldn't track a package or where a package was missing or where we've experienced a delivery delay. Uh, while there's always uncontrollable factors at play, you know, many of these experiences can actually be avoided. 
we often see documentation with errors in it, you know, particularly on the airway bill. You know, for example, the wrong value, or in fact, you know, no value declared at all. Um, you know, errors on the commercial invoice. You know, these result in, in clearance delays, you know, or even worse, you know, higher duties and taxes. So when I say this, you know, I know this will resonate with some of you. You know, the impact of these uh, these disruptions, unfortunately, include bad customer experience. It includes anxiety on both ends, uh, from the shipper or for the shipper and for the recipient as well. It may even be that it impacts a third party payer where you may indeed be that, that third party payer. So, you know, I'm sure no one wants those experiences repeated, especially right now during uh, such challenging times. So what I'd like to do now is just look at that how an end-to-end -end closed loop, you know, seamless logistics model can make all the difference uh, and some of the things that you can do. So on the screen now, you'll see uh, an example of a pickup done on day zero and a delivery on day one. You'll also see that from the point of pickup to the point of delivery, there's at least seven touch points along its journey. You know, at each each, each one of these seven touch points, you know, packages handled a staggering amount of times. So you know, an accurate flow of information becomes absolutely vital. Uh, you know, electronic data capture is crucial. It, it enables the whole process to run smoothly. Uh, it allows customers, uh, sorry, customers clearance, I should say, to be completed in advance. And, and that alone plays a huge part in eliminating the risk of delays. So, you know, speaking of that customer's clearance aspect, how is it that we can help you uh, ensure a positive experience? Well, you know, first off, you know, as I said before, it's, it's important to ensure that the documentation, specifically the airway bills and the commercial invoices are accurate. While they're basic and, and, and prepared you know, on a daily basis, the information is simply not always accurate, which often delays and, or sorry, results in, in delays to the shipments further down the line. Uh, additional information could also be required, you know, things like licenses or permits, you know, depending on the requirements of the destination country. You know, but apart from that accurate documentation, license permits, that sort of thing, you know, knowing what's prohibited is particularly crucial. I had an example yesterday, actually, of, uh, of a shipment going into South Africa. Uh, it was an everyday food item. You know, these are sorts of things that, that people don't always contemplate. You know, a lot of these things are day-to-day -day goods. They seem harmless to us. You know, perishable food, cosmetics. You know, then there's controlled drugs, there's poultry products, honey is another one. You know, imagine sending or importing something prohibited without even knowing the fact. You know, there's likely to be many hours spent uh, just rectifying those, uh, those situations. So, you know, as I talk about the importance of preparing documents accur accurately and knowing your permits and licenses, uh, prohibited goods, it, it all gets really confusing. Uh, and this is an area that FedEx can help you. So FedEx has a system called uh, FedEx Label Trade Manager, or GTM for short. With GTM, you have online access to estimate your duties and taxes uh, at the destination countries. It also helps you find all the necessary documentation that you need for your international shipments. Uh, and it provides you that important regulatory information. So by utilizing this tool, uh, it really does you know, give you confidence in dealing with offshore markets. Next one is, um, is, uh, is so ETD. So it's an excellent way to support um, you and ensure the accurate information is transmitted through to the destination for customs clearance. So ETD stands for Electronic Trade Documents. It's a free feature that's available to you uh, on your existing FedEx online shipping tool. You know, with ETD, you submit all of your customs uh, documentation electronically. So you no longer need to print out multiple copies of, uh, of your paperwork. Everything's processed for you as you create your airway bill. As soon as you click ship on your, on your shipping tool, ETD automatically uploads all of that information uh, into the FedEx systems. And so that means that your shipping documentation is available for us to check uh, straight away, both at origin and at destination. So it ensures a high level of accuracy uh, and uh, accuracy of the information, sorry, and basically immediately puts you in, in a greater level of control. But aside from uh, Global Trade Manager and electronic trade documents, there are some other uh, great FedEx digital technology and automation tools available to you that you can leverage. So what I'll do now is I'll briefly touch on four of these, uh, the self-service options available to you and, and to your business. 
Uh, the first is Ship Manager or FSM. Uh, we talked earlier about the importance of accurate shipping documents. So FedEx Ship Manager uh, helps you streamline your international shipments. So it enables you to prepare and, and, and track effectively, check your quotes, request pickups online, and much, much more. Uh, secondly, FedEx Delivery Manager International, or FDMI. Uh, it's a global interactive delivery management solution. It notifies the recipients of pending deliveries via email or via SMS text message. And most importantly, it allows them to, to customize the final delivery. So, you know, you imagine uh, that you're shipping to your customer and they're going to move away from their given delivery address at the scheduled delivery time. The normal process that would happen there is that you know, there's an unsuccessful attempt to deliver as the person's not there, but, uh, ready to accept it. So the package then needs to be carried back to uh, the ship centre or you know, the carrier's warehouse. Once the recipient's home or available, they make contact with the, with the carrier and rearrange a suitable time for delivery. You know, that's a costly exercise for everybody. You know, there's possible cost implications for the shipper, um, for the receiver due to the d delayed delivery. Uh, the carrier has to perform that delivery function twice. Um, so it's not an ideal situation. The great thing is with FedEx and uh, with, um, with FDMI, uh, all this can actually be avoided. So with FDMI, uh, if you see receiver's not going to be at the given location, they can proactively select a, a date and time to have their shipment delivered. You know, such advanced notification it reflects really well on, on your business and provides a much better customer experience for, um, for the end user. You know, you, FDMI is such a great tool for, you know, imagine you're shipping up to the States for argument's sake during the busy holiday seasons. It's a really good way to, to redirect and make sure those packages get through in a timely manner. Uh, next is FedEx tracking. And you know, Matt talked before around the importance of being able to, to monitor your shipments as they go through. So FedEx tracking allows you to do exactly that. Now, track your, um, your shipments via uh, your mobile device or through the website and you track live on the go. Uh, and as well as seeing, you know, as well as that, you'll see all of the details uh, and there's, you know, of, of the shipments itself. There's also a wide range of notifications that you can select, uh, and you can even generate customized reports out of it. It's a great tool. Uh, lastly, FedEx Billing Online it enables you to download all of your invoices uh, into different formats, so you know, PDF, CSV, XML, etc. You can manage uh, several different accounts all with a single login. You can view your invoices, credit notes, um, check your shipment details, all that sort of thing. If you need to query an invoice for argument's sake, you now do that online, which is much faster than, than picking up the phone and trying to trying, trying to connect with somebody. Uh, so the great thing also really with this is that you can access all of that information through the shopping tool through, uh, for up to six months after the invoice is paid. You know, all of these tools, you know, especially these, uh, the four recent ones and the two earlier, you know, give you greater visibility and control. Uh, and with these logistics management tools, you can save your time, reduce your costs, uh, optimize your operations. You know, combined, they make a consistent, seamless logistics solution a real possibility to you. Uh, and that will make the difference, I guess, to propel your business into the new norm. And Matt's just touched on this, and I'd, I'd like to now just spend a few moments talking about uh, the Trans-Tasman service. You know, plainly we know that New Zealand to Australia and Australia to New Zealand is an absolutely critical lane for, um, for businesses in, in New Zealand. And Matt, Matt mentioned some of the staggering statistics before coming out as a result of COVID. You know, according to Auckland Cargo, oh, sorry, sorry, Auckland Airport Cargo Monitor in June this year, uh, Auckland Airport had just 10 airlines operating 255 uh, cargo flights using those passenger aircrafts to the belly space of the planes. In addition, there was 113 freighter flights. So, you know, we were already pleased in January earlier on this year, uh, January this year, I should say, you know, pre-COVID, um, you know, FedEx launched a, a dedicated data service between Auckland and Sydney. You know, they say timing's everything, it's certainly been great. Uh, the service has been vital in keeping our customers connected not only to Australia but to the world beyond. And you know, we're really pleased to be in a position to be supporting businesses with this new Trans Tasman service. Uh, you know, th this enhanced service has presented you know, New Zealand businesses um, with a lot of new trading opportunities through those better connections through to the rest of the world, and, and, and really importantly, through to um, a much stronger Australasian service. You know, some of the key benefits uh, of it include, you know, at a time when when cargo air capacity is, is scarce, 
uh, businesses really need it. So um, this five day a week, so this is Monday through Thursday and again on a Saturdays, uh, provides a, a lot more capacity into, um, into the eCargo network. Now this in turn provides you know, enhanced quality and in particular greater efficiency by connecting through into that Australian business. And really importantly, uh, it's allowed us to retain the option of the uh, international economy distribution service for trans attachment shipments. So that keeps your costs down as well. Uh, lastly, uh, it's, uh, and this one's been vital, it's allowed our customers uh, to move all of those heavyweight shipments, you know, the larger ones, you know, when Matt's talked around capacity and PPE gear, flooding the network, the ability to send those larger shipments uh, has been vital for a lot of businesses. So I've, uh, I've now come to the end of, of the part of the presentation. I, you know, I'd like to thank you again for, for joining us today and I'll hand it back now to, to Matt Daniels, who will take you through some of the key learnings uh, from today's session to prepare your business for, um, for transition. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Brett. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of good information there. I, I'd just like to just um, just sort of summarise this this part of the webinar um, in just saying that uh, I think we agree it significantly impacted our supply chains and that, um, and that really uh, we need to redesign our supply chains to allow more time uh, in areas where you may need it now, such as procurement, order fulfilment, and transportation and transportation is often the the shortest part of your supply chain pipeline however often the most stressful so customers are not as physically present as they used to be and are you seeing this as an opportunity to differentiate yourself against your your competitors uh, sometimes physical interaction with your partners suppliers or customers could just be a pickup or delivery experience in the supply chain so therefore, it better be a good one. Do you have the right B2C platform? Does it align to your business? Allows returns, changes to your customer profiles? Is there a platform to leave feedback? Is it appealing to both domestic and international customers? Are you using automation to support your business, especially over this period? So Brent just mentioned tools such as, uh, you know, the electronic uh, trade documents, global trade manager. And on top of this, we also have a SAM, small and medium portable with lots of great information in there. Uh, and you can also access our improved features of service from FedEx and TNT with our Trans-Tasman service. So by partnering with FedEx and using our automation and, uh, and our digital technology, you're on your way to optimizing your supply chain performance. I'll just pass you back to Matt. He's just gonna briefly speak about some of the key resources we've spoken about and just perhaps highlight some of the features and benefits. Back to you, Matt. Yeah, thanks, thanks Matt. Um, so what you're seeing now on the slides are the resources available to support you on your journey. Um, so some key resources that we have available to our customers include the Small Business Centre. And here you can find key information on um, key resources to help your business. So really, how can FedEx help you address your shipping needs? I um, mean, there's some really good information, training materials on electronic trade documents and also FedEx Ship Manager. We've also included some links to FedEx Ship Manager at FedEx.com and, and FedEx Electronic Trade Documents, which Brent touched on during today's presentation. These are fantastic digital solutions that can help you save time and money by moving your shipments online. Another resource that's just highlighted there is orchestrating the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. This publication is actually from Deloitte 2020 but it's a really good resource to help understand additional best practice tips. We've gone through a fair few of those today with Matt and Brent, um, but there's just a good white paper that's available there for you to access. And I'd also encourage everyone, if you haven't already, sign up for our e-news to access the latest updates, offers, and communications from FedEx too. So you can see there on this slide, some key resources to support you on your journey during the current circumstances. So I highly recommend that you save these links um, to your favorites bar so that you can access them um, at, at your disposal. So we've now moved into the next section of the presentation, which is question and answers. And um, I'll now open it up to Matt and Brent to assist with this session. So if you do have any questions, please provide them in the chat function 
and we'll endeavour to answer those in this section here. So prior to today's discussion, we actually received quite a few pre-questions uh, that came through from those that had registered for today's session. So the first question that uh, has come through is, what can I do to protect my supply chain given the current disruptions caused by COVID-19? Uh, Matt, I will hand this one over to you to answer. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Matthew. Look, I, I, I mentioned it before, forward planning um, and be prepared. It, it may be completely different to what you've done historically. You need to think outside the box. On one hand, uh, it, it's a bit challenging that, uh, that it's really something that, uh, that you've never gone through before, but, but you know, nobody else has either. So it is really a level playing field. It's who can, who can prepare themselves to adapt and be agile with your customers in mind. So focus on end-to-end -end supply chain constraint management. You know, identify that those constraints that I talked about earlier, um, internal limitations, workforce availability, raw materials, and work back in your supply chain to explore areas where you can save time to improve your ability to meet customer delivery deadlines. Uh, secure your logistics capacity. It's not like how it used to be. Um, you know, there's really just freighters and very few um, other types of options available. Uh, plan an effective logistics solution. So, so, so leverage the various modes of transportation, air, sea and road, uh, and then look at strategic partnerships and collaboration, partner with a logistics provider with a closed loop system, which we've just seen. Uh, that will help provide peace of mind and give you door-to-door -door custodial control. So we have international specialists in the organisation who can assist you and perhaps give you some options, some other options to consider, and then maybe perhaps even tailor some solutions to meet your requirements. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, excellent. Great advice there, Matt, for the audience today. Um, the next question that I can see that's come through is, I send shipments around the world. With the limited space and booking restrictions across all carriers, can FedEx help me? Brent, I'll hand this one over to you to answer for us. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And, and look, that's a really good question. You know, despite the challenges that, um, that we've discussed today of COVID-19, short answer is yes, we can. Uh, but as Matt just, uh, Matt just mentioned, you know, it really does come down to, to, to good planning. You know, our sales professionals continue to work directly with both our customers and our operations team to, to build those cargo uplift plans. You know, it allows uh, an opportunity to prepare for, for both parties. You know, FedEx continues to play you know, an integral role in supporting businesses with the importation of, of PPE gear. Uh, and we've found that our ability you know, to connect our planning with our local market specialists and, and, and indeed with our customers, it's really helped uh, our customers get through these tough and uncertain times. Excellent, thanks Brent. Great insight into the support that FedEx can provide in these unprecedented circumstances. Uh, the next question that's come through is, are FedEx services still available during the current COVID challenges that we're experiencing? Matt, I'll hand this one to you. Yeah, I mean, look, despite the challenges that we've had, uh, and as an organisation, as you are, we are um, obviously looking at uh, how to keep our employees safe with social distancing, uh, um, you know, um, hand wipes, the, the, you know, the whole thing. Our frontline teams, I think, are doing a fantastic job each day. They're out in the field supporting um, our customers uh, and keeping commerce moving and delivering critical relief during the COVID-19 crisis. We're still... Uh, delivering to and within impacted areas as local conditions and restrictions allow. So as an essential service, uh, we are still operating um, right across Australia through the borders. Uh, there's no border closures. Our air and networks continue to operate. Um, we don't outsource closed loop environment, which we talked about. Uh, and um, our, our full range of domestic and international services are available. Uh, you can contact our customer services or sales to find out um, um, how we are doing that. Uh, there are some challenges. If you look at um, uh, the Trans-Tasman service in and out of, uh, of, of um, Australia to New Zealand and back again, uh, it, is, it is pretty full, right? Um, 
you know, if you give us 10 pallets of, of low yield economy shipments, I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. But I can tell you that we are supplementing it with additional flights. Um, in and out of Australia, we were operating six flights a week. We're now operating um, sometimes up to 23 flights a week. Uh, and we have, um, uh, and, a, and a lot of that is feeding down through us, through Sydney, our Sydney gateway into Auckland. Uh, and, uh, and of course, we are doing that and working seven days a week. So um, pretty much, I will say, business as usual, with a little bit of a caveat there to say that, um, that we are challenged. We cannot supplement additional volume with the same commercial uplift that we used to have. Uh, however, um, uh, we, are, you know, we are still operating and, um, and maintaining for our customers a, a fairly consistent supply chain in these, in cha these challenging environments, Matt. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question that's come through is, how can FedEx help me identify the customs clearance requirements for the various markets that I ship to? And I know you touched on this in your presentation. I'll hand this one to you. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And, and I, did, I went through this. So we've got the, the great tool called uh, FedEx Label Trade Manager. Um, you know, we know that you know, every market uh, does have those differences in, in customs clearance processes. Uh, and it is really important that you understand the market that you're shipping into, um, uh, just to understand what those what those requirements are, the information that you need, duties and taxes, and those sorts of things. So, you know, GTM or you know, Global Trade Manager is uh, is that one stop resource for all of your international uh, information, and it's really going to assist you engaging with those new markets with with, with confidence. You know, with the GDM, you know, again, just to recap, um, what you're able to do is identify the relevant duties and taxes uh, that it's going to be levied, levied against your um, your shipment. Um, it's going to help you identify and locate the right documentation uh, that you need, um, along with um, providing access to information around that all important regulatory inf regulatory information uh, specific to to your shipment. You know, obtain advisories, things like um, search harmonised codes, customs codes. Um, you know, these things are really key to ensuring that um, you know that your customs clearance process runs smoothly. So, again, yeah, FedEx Label Trade Manager will help you through that process. Thanks, Matt. A global trade manager, really great resource available to our customers to identify those custom clearance requirements. Thanks, Brent. Uh, next question that's come through is what special services are available from FedEx during these times? Matt, I'll hand this one to you. Yeah, look, uh, we still continue to operate our special services. One of the, um, the value adds from the integration with TNT and FedEx is that TNT had a, a network, a special services global network that was able to pull together solutions that were outside of our network, such as dangerous goods, time critical services, um, next flight out onboard courier. Um, so we, I would suggest that if customers have anything that is a little tricky or, or cannot, be, cannot be done in a normal logistic supply chain sense, that they, they contact our special services uh, um, office uh, department and um, and they can come back with some um, some uh, bespoke solutions for you. Yeah, thank you very much, Matt. Uh, the next question that I can see that's come through from the audience is how can FedEx electronic trade documents help my business? Really great question. I'll hand this one to you, Tensa. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So, you know, recapping on, on, on ETD or electronic trade documents, you know, this is the, pro the system that allows your business to, to automate and really streamline your customs clearance process. You know, that'll save you both uh, time and money. You know, it's really important to get a head start on your customs clearance processes you know, by submitting your trade documents electronically to us ahead of your, uh, ahead of your shipment. So ETD provides you that option. Uh, it provides customers pre-clearance um, support and assistance by and proactive uh, problem notify, uh, sorry, problem uh, resolution, I should say, um, allowing us to check their documentation before uh, before the shipment actually exits the country. So it reduces your chance of customs delays and, uh, and gives you real confidence into uh, into shipping into global markets, you know, sending you goods. Thanks, Matt. 
Excellent. Thanks very much, Brent, for, for that one. Another question that's come through is, will the business to consumer cost to serve likely increase or decrease as business to consumer becomes more common? Matt, I'll hand this one over to you to answer. Yeah, look, uh, look the global pandemic has, has really sent the e-commerce industry into overdrive. We've seen that not just with, with our logistics providers, but also uh, with our postal uh, networks as well. Um, social distancing, tighter restrictions, closure of brick and mortar stores, shifting consumer behavior, uh, lockdowns. These are all um, areas that drive uh, that B2C requirement. So as air cargo space fills up quickly um, in these unprecedented times, I would expect that business to consumer costs will increase. And that's just reflecting the fact there's higher demand for air freight uh, then there is supply, right? So when we look at the average cost of a B2C shipment, it's typically under $100 versus uh, a B2B shipment, which is typically over $500. So you can see there that the, that the demand and what people will pay. I think, however, as we continue to explore options to unlock uh, efficiencies and optimize last mile deliveries, and to that, I mean that to the extent that if you look at the integration between TNT and FedEx in New Zealand, we've enabled the, co the combination of both pickup and delivery fleets uh, to combine and, and now actually expand what we directly control in terms of pickup and deliveries within Auckland. Um, we should see um, improved economies of scale and a steady reduction in costs. Uh, as I mentioned, B2C customers are typically a little bit more demanding. Uh, they tend to, to uh, engage our call centers more often uh, and really want visibility over the shipments, shipments in transit. And that's critical to ensuring they have a better, a better experience. So in short, uh, I don't see any reduction really in B2C costs. The capacity is not there. However, longer term, as we emerge from the pandemic, I don't think the customer behavior will change significantly. And so further capacity opening up should see a reduction in costs and make it more attractive for additional operators to enter the market. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, great insight there, Matt, provided on the business to consumer industry and the forecasted trends. Another question that's come through from the audience is, when can we likely expect for international economy service to come back? What will this look like? Uh, Brent, I'll hand this one over to you to answer for us. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And I know this will be a, a question that's close to the heart of a lot of the, the legacy TNT customers. You know, that customer base were, were heavy users of the economy products. You know, we've talked a, a lot today about the impact of COVID and, uh, you know, and, and how dramatic the changes in the global air cargo uh, industry has been. You know, both FedEx and TNT you know, faced you know, increasing demand, uh, you know, despite this reduced capacity. Um, and, and so these situations really do drive change in the way the your network's structured. You know, we, we're constantly moving aircraft around uh, to ensure backlogs are, uh, are addressed and that, and that we can keep the goods moving. Yeah, but one of these temporary um, yeah, adjustments that we've had to make is, is, the, is the temporary uh, suspension of those selected economy uh, services, with the exception of um, recover off on the Trans Tasman leg. So we're still able to offer that, um, given that daily flight that we're operating. So you know we'll continue to utilise you know, our network to minimise you know, disruptions uh, you know, to our customers and deliver the best possible service that we can. But you know, as we unlock this additional capacity. You know, we'll look to remove those uh, those temporary suspensions on economy service. Our services we, we work really hard, um, I said to uh, uh, to retain those, and I said very very pleased that we've that we've retained it on the Trans Tasman League. You know, look, regardless, you know, we'll, we'll keep you updated uh, along the way. You know, as Matt mentioned before, you know, for the latest updates, you know, go to the FedEx uh, New Zealand homepage and, and visit the COVID nineteen information hub. There's some great great information in there. Thanks, Matt. Excellent. Thanks for that information, Brent. Now, the next question that's come through is, what, it, what is FedEx doing to prepare for further growth in freight volumes in APAC as more people turn to online sales and deliveries? Matt, I'll hand this one to you to address. Yeah, thank, thanks, Matt. Um, 
Look, we uh, continue to invest in local ground operations, uh, more drop-off and pick-up locations uh, across the country to provide some flexibility, more hubs. Um, we've just positioned more aircraft in the region uh, and all of this is to try and stay ahead of the curve. Uh, we're investing uh, specifically in digital tools um, and as Brent mentioned around FedEx Delivery Manager and around more self-service um, for our customers that, that enable them to um, immediately action and, 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 and implement uh, solutions themselves. Uh, we are constantly looking for you know, you know, opportunities to improve our services. Um, you, know, a, a, you know, a good example of this was the Trans Tasman um, service that we that we launched uh, between Auckland and Sydney. Uh, we have additional flights um, between uh, uh, Asia and and the US in particular, um, out of China down into Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so all of this is just a continued investment, and, um, and, and and we'll just keep it going. Uh, at the moment, um, we are experiencing obviously heavy volume, so we are flexing significantly to try and make sure that we maintain our service levels. Uh, back to you, Matt. Yeah, excellent. So we've got time for one last question. Uh, I can see that there's been a few questions that have come through from the chat function. Um, if there's any questions that re uh, relate to an account specific query, we'll actually endeavor to respond to that after the session just for privacy. Um, so the last question that I can see that's come through is how can we best advise customers to reevaluate their shipping models in terms of passing on freight costs to their customers? I'll hand this one over to you. Yeah, thanks Matt. I, I think probably the first uh, the first really important thing is to use the information that you've learned today uh, to help uh, your customers understand the reality of the new situation. Um, yeah, there, there, there is a lot of things that are forced uh, on us that, um, I said that, will, that will require them to change their um, uh, the shipping methods or, or, or change the, the price of shipping. But you know, beyond that, I think you know, look for those opportunities to unlock efficiencies and save costs. Uh, yeah, be proactive and engaging with your stakeholders. You know, you can consider uh, creating value through innovation, you know, weighing up options to release cash flow, you know, lean in on loyalty and those strategic partnerships that you've got. Uh, remind yourself and your customers of the, the digital tools that are available. You know, there's a help flex your business, you, know, you become more agile, more adaptable. Um, I, but uh, sharing, sharing information is absolutely key. Thanks, Matt. Thank, thanks, Matt. And listen uh, to our, our, our customers, thank you once again for um, taking the time. Uh, we know that there are other uh, alternatives in the market and we really appreciate you choosing FedEx. Uh, that concludes the uh, webinar. Everyone have a, a great day. Thank you.